Hey everybody, welcome to a new LP, and I'm today I'm joined by... Helper! Helper! Let's see if I can get the microphone closer to us so we don't have to actually sit up. <laughs> oh, no, I have a fancy microphone, I can point it towards us. Okay, uh, so, yes, I'm playing Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Uh, before we get started... I am playing the, the CD version, as it says here, and they have voices, so for, fortunately, I don't have to voice everybody in this game. Also, um, this is my favorite LucasArts game. I've played it several times. I had it when I was a little kid, and I loved this game. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it until I think I was even maybe out of college that there were actually three different paths. I mean, the instruction manual even says it. And I somehow missed this, and I somehow picked the same path every time I played. So I plan to play all three paths of the game. However, one path I'll know very well, or well enough, that I won't be stuck for very long. The other two paths are going to be blind, and I'll explain more when I get to that part. Uh, so let's get going. Start. That's good. This was proving to be very difficult to get to record, so... I hope this works. I just spent two and a half hours testing this. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Good job, Michael Stimmel and Ron Baldwin. You made a great game. <laughs> what about Tony Hughes? Tony Hughes. Sean Clark. How do I get the feeling that my music isn't quite right? Uh, I'll have to check on that. Alright, Jones, how are you gonna find that statue and all this junk? I kinda have to admit, I was just so happy that I got everything recording, I kinda forgot to check my audio driver. I don't think that was the best I could have gotten, but I'll work on it between days. So, this is a point-and-click adventure, um, and it is LucasArts. Now, for anyone who's been watching my videos all these years, you'll probably remember that I comment on the fact that I'm from the Sierra School of Adventuring. Um, back in, I guess, the mid to late 90s, these point-and-click games got very, very popular, and um, LucasArts and Sierra were two very popular uh, companies. LucasArts was well known for having very good uh, graphics and plot, but they were very easy in the eyes of many adventure gamers. And Sierra was usually a little lower quality, I felt like, but the games were so difficult that for me, I kind of felt that was, I, I felt like there was, uh, I guess I had more fun trying to figure out the things and, you know, the whole idea of save early, save often. So <laughs> I, I don't think I'm gonna be saving as often this game, but I might, I don't know, we'll see. A stone carving of Shiva. So yeah, you can right-click on things that show up. Some kind of funeral. Yeah, we, this is the one thing I kept testing when I was when I was trying to get it to work. I've heard him say that twenty times now. It's a medieval gargoyle, or good imitation. I should also mention I've only seen one Indiana Jones movie. Which one was it, Helper? Very first one. Yeah, the very first one. So. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue. I of actually Horus. played this game long before I actually watched any of the movies. <laughs> Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. What is, oh, candlestick. It's a genuine candlestick. Yeah, I'm not going to be rushing through this game. I'm going to be exploring a lot, because that's one of my favorite things to do in these games. Ooh, statue. Poor Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. Ah! Oh no! Boom, boom. <laughs> He has his hat. Always need the hat. Ah, Diet Coke. Yeah, the intro in this game does last a little while, but I'm not gonna skip through it. Let's see here. Shelves. Looks like textiles from the Shaman collection. Marcus thought Potlatch Indians carved this. <laughs> Looks like a movie prop. Who's to me. Marcus? Do you know Helper? I'm assuming a museum curator, but no, I don't remember. Oh, 
Looks like beadwork from the Phoenix Collection. The label says unidentified pot shards. Okay, I don't know what pot shards are. I don't know if it's supposed to be pot shards. <laughs> he just keeps falling. Yeah, I really need to fix the sound driver. It sounds kind of twangy. I don't need them. They're just textbooks. Oh, but they're books on pots. <laughs> Ooh, books on tools. I think I've read them all. Oh, interesting. Books on statues? These books don't look familiar. Uh-oh. Byron, does this game already upset you? Because we keep falling through holes. Like, how we're just destroying this place. You better get that roof. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Cat figurines. Let's check them out. A cheap copy of a Siamese idol. <laughs> Now, that's actually random, which cat is the idol. I mean, which one's the real cat. I like that. Anyone getting Laura 2 vibes? Hmm? Anyone getting Laura Bo oh, 2 Laura vibes? Bo yeah, Laura Bo 2. Oh, furnace. It's hot. I think it's interesting how the color of the word changes. Left locker. Right locker. Oh, the middle locker. I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Awesome. The golden artifact. Let's take it. The horn statue. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. Can you do something right? Scum. So was it scripting something for mani of Maniac Mansion? I can't I remember. <laughs> Scum. Oh, Byron. So pretty much we just robbed the university. <laughs> Why we couldn't go in the front door and do that, I don't know. We were just looking through all the different levels. I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. <laughs> Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. <laughs> My word, India, a small metal V. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take Gasp. it. Gasp! <gasps> really, Mr. Smith. Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him! Get him! Yeah! Ah. Oh, underwear. He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What is the spy one with the holy statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. This is a gun. <laughs> An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? 
Sophia Hapgood, she was my assistant, a spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. How odd. Indy, Kona found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You shall t second me tell you. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Even though Greenland's technically colder than Iceland. What? Wasn't the bead in the coat? No, it was in his hand, I think. I don't know, actually. Good point. Alright, and now we get to finally do something. <laughs> it's a very long introduction for a point and click, but a good one. So yeah, this is one of my favorite styles of games. We have to click on a word, like pick up, marquee. I can't pick that yeah. up. Can you pick up your nose like a hero's quest? No, that's pick your nose. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I get, you can upgrade your lock picking skill by picking your nose in Heroes Quest, uh, or Quest for Glory 1 and 2. Imagine the suckers who actually pay to see Sophia's Lost World lecture. So one nice thing about this one is you'll notice that it's always walk to, but if you look in the bottom and you hover over there's one in yellow, if you right click, it'll give you, it'll take the one in yellow, so I right clicked on it and it did uh, look at marquee. And it's really nice because it, it does a lot of good shortcuts. Uh, you don't always want to use that shortcut, but there's usually a good amount of them, like this one. Hello there. The show sold out, sir. Now wait. No seats, no standing room, no exception. Oh, can we pick up the ticket taker? No. <laughs> She's not your type anyway. Yeah. It's today's paper. That is one thing I don't like about LucasArts games, is I feel like they don't add a lot of side humor like Sierra did, hiding jokes and everything. But they're still- this is still my favorite LucasArts game. Can I change it to Superman? Let's try. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. <laughs> ah, back in the day when it was only a nickel to make a call. And when you had to go somewhere to make a call. You must use your phone. It's a crate. Oh, great. Look at that crate. Well, let's just sneak in the back door. I'm sure it's safe. Hmm, it's unlocked. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. <laughs> I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations, or I'm here to fix the lights, or let me in, you Darwinian nightmare. <laughs> um... What do you think, Helper? I'm guessing I'm here to fix the lights is the right one. I'm here to fix the lights. There's nothing wrong with the lights. Now shove off! <laughs> Wait a minute. Why won't you take no for an answer? Okay, so... You'll notice the first one's changed. This is kind of LucasArts in action here, with pushing you in the right direction. But the first one's changed. I really need to talk to your star. I really need to talk to your star. So, buy a ticket like everyone else. I think there's a misunderstanding here. It's a matter of life and statuary. <laughs> I've got to see her. She's the most wonderful woman. Or just let me in, you ape. <laughs> I actually think I remember this one, so... I've got to see her. She's the most wonderful woman. Don't get around, pal. You're talking about my idol. It's been a few years since I've played. No kidding, I think she's the greatest. Or, I shouldn't exaggerate, but she's great with fiction. <laughs> <laughs> if, that's a, if she's his idol, we should probably be nice. No kidding. I think she's the greatest. Me too. There's something about her. Yeah, she's very pretty. She's got great cerebrum. She's very smart. She sure knows how to... Oh, 
Obfuscate. Obfuscate. I don't know what that means. Uh, obscure. Make cloudy. So I, th I think if I'm right, we're supposed to do this one. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart? I'll say. You know what I really like? It's the way she... she... Pontificates? <laughs> the way she cons folks out of their hard-earned cash. The way she tosses her head when she laughs. The way she makes things so easy to understand. The way she hires poor Neanderthals like you. <laughs> So we'll go with things this one. The way she makes things easy to understand? That's it. All that smart stuff seems so easy when I'm listening to her. Hey, you're okay for a college boy. Come on in. So, one interesting thing about this puzzle is... I mentioned earlier there's three paths in the game. That puzzle actually itself has three paths, and they're very similar to the, 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 the three paths we'll take later. There's... I'm gonna pause this real quick. Um... There's the path to work with the girl, there's the path that uh, requires intelligence to solve extra puzzles, and then there's the path just to punch everybody's lights out. The hero's path. The hero path, yeah. Uh, now, if you kept saying mean things to the guy, eventually you get into a fist fight with him and you can punch him out and just come back. Uh, the other route is to make him mad, to want to chase after you, and you hide in the alley behind the crates and you get him back there and then you jump out and run in. Um, I've never, I, I have actually done the path where you punch him out, and I'm very bad at it. And I know at least once I've done the one where behind, hid behind the head behind the crate. But, um, I guess I can show them, can't I? I guess maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe next video I might try doing them and see what happens. I don't remember exactly the lines to do them, but we'll see. But anyways, yes, let's resume. So if we try to walk out there while she's in a presentation. Hold on! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. <laughs> I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. I need to talk to that so-called psychic. Call that fraud over here, will you? Or oops, sorry to bother you. Uh, let's be nice. I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Write a letter. Okay. So... This was taken a long while ago, when I thought we might like each other. Oh, that, that's the that, Oh, oops. I forgot something outside. Um, so we need to distract him. So what can we distract an old man with? Not an umbrella. An umbrella. How about ganking this newspaper? Did you pay that nickel for it? No, I ganked it. It's The newsstand is closed. They won't mind. Plus, it's today's newspaper, which means it's not cool tomorrow. It's today's paper. So let's... Let's open the paper. It doesn't seem to open Really? It. Where are the cartoons? I don't think that'll All work. Alright, fine. Give newspaper to stagehand. Excuse me. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis, as it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. The one thing about that whole thing that bothers me, she says that Atlantis was located on a continent out in the ocean. That must have been one giant piece of land. I would assume an island, because I don't think Greenland's big enough to be classified as a continent. Well, I know well, it isn't. Well, look at Antarctica. The amount of land that Antarctica has is actually really small. That's true. <sighs> yeah. But how come Greenland isn't a continent by that point? It doesn't have enough ice. It doesn't have enough ice. It's too green. So yeah, if you keep talking to him, that's what's going to happen. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? 
However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Come forth, Aquaman. Or perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Wow, that must be what, a lot. <laughs> Listen to it a hundred times. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Oh, okay. You look tired. Wouldn't you like to call it a day? Or Madame told me you to tell you told me to tell you you're fired. Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Or you know this lecture stuff bores me. Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life. Don't you ever read? Don't you have any hobbies? Don't you ever get bored? Or never mind. Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby Ooh. of mine. What if I give you something to read? What if I give you something to walk away? Or too bad I don't have anything to offer. What if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Oh, okay. So we do. Now, if you talk to him long enough, you'll figure out that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, the newspaper doesn't seem as random as it made. I made a sound at the beginning, but I just kind of skipped through it to find that out. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? What's the matter, Byron? Oh, boy. I love the... This is one of my favorite parts of the game. Let's push levers. Okay, maybe not that one. What's the middle one do? Nothing? Oh, he's glowing. Oh. Oops. So, what's going on here? I, I can't do anything right. The yellow means you're almost there, and the green means you have them all. Which technically doesn't make any sense in real life, but... Now, you also have to notice there's a tiny button here you want to push when you got all green lights. There it goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through. Uh. May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of. of. Deceit. Deceit. Thanks, Indiana. Indiana Jones! You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack o' lantern. <laughs> oh, great. Good night, folks. I guess she just leaves it there. <laughs> Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. Oh, she's using a knife. I'd say it's about time. She's what? Going, going to use a knife. Oh, no. To mince. Okay. Everyone's just still sitting oh, there. No. Uh oh. Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. Neanderthal card when you need one. Yeah, no. No one here. Nor here either. Oh, obviously he would still be hanging around the building. Hiding inside the crate. <laughs> he just rises up. I love that. At least it wasn't like a vampire, right? <laughs> He is a nickel. Doctor Uberman, fantastic you. We found the treasure we see. That's interesting. It said something different than what he said. Like how he's gotta run through his fingers through his hair. I always like that touch. It's good animation. <laughs> That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? We stole one. Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Uberman announced his plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Practical results are... Practical results are years away. Come on, a few atoms won't even light a match. 
They'll never find enough uranium, or sounds like they're dreaming. Which <laughs> one do you think, Helper? First one. Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you said before, she'll always kind of respond with, that's why they're looking for Atlantis. Yet you've been concealing important artifacts, you stole things from my expedition, you've been dealing goods on the black market, or you never published a word about your finds. Let's say that she stole things. Yet you stole things from my expedition. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small wow. coppery bead under those clippings in she my desk. She dressed real fast. She did. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. <gasps> Watch closely. I'm sure most of my male viewers are. The bead is made of auric halcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. <laughs> jiggling. Did you see that? Nope. Yeah, creepy. I'd say it's only about a four on the Richter scale. Is your electric bill paid? <laughs> that was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. Closer than Atlantis, that's for sure. So what happens with the bead then? It eats it. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it's even deep enough to take the bead in. I'm not interested in spiritual mobile jumbo. Don't try your second act on me or Nurha what? No what? Nurha what? Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city, or Atlantis has been underwater for centuries. Or who knows where these beads really came from, or you may have just used the last bead. I like the last one. Okay. You may have just used the last bead. Shh. I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? Oh, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine myth. That book is a legendary hoax, or if Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it, or I think Plato just wanted to tell a tall tale, or it's not in any library I've never been in. How about the first one? That book is a legendary hoax. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. You found this stuff in Iceland, right? Or where were these pieces during doing in Iceland, I wonder? Or how did the Nazis get interested in Iceland? Or why Iceland? Why not Florida where it's warm? I like the last one. Yeah, let's let's ask her about this one. You found this stuff in Iceland, right? Yes, near our old dig site. I thought so. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. She likes to run her fingers through her hair also. Off to Iceland. It's a cloudy day. I think this might be a good place to stop for now. And I'll see you guys next time when we talk to some dude. <laughs> Farewell, viewers. Bye for now.